Here we go. Chapter four, we're going to continue the present indicative. We're looking at verbs and we're going to begin nouns. So has everybody been chanting? Just checking how that, uh, yes, I hit record, thank you. So um, we are going to begin the class by ABC, always be chanting. So turn yourself off and for a couple of minutes, we're gonna chant this first paradigm. Why do we chant these? Well, this isn't a paradigm, it's a conjugation. Why do we chant these? We chant them and we chant them out loud in order for our tongues to get around the sounds, to internalize it. So in time, as I've told you, you won't need to look these things up or even chant through the paradigms or the conjugations. You'll just know what the first indicative is. It's Zvadati, you just know it. But you only really get to that point by first internalizing everything. Otherwise, with every word you try to translate, you have to look up the grammar and you have to not only look up the, the meaning in the dictionary, but look up all the grammar around why that word appears as it does, because Sanskrit words do not appear in their dictionaries like our dictionaries. Like the English dictionary just has all the words. They're right there. Sanskrit will just actually cite the stems and the roots. So... To get started, our root here is vud. Now, the root vud takes an uh. So vud plus uh becomes the stem. I'll talk about this more. That's the stem to the verb. On top of that stem to the verb, you get the endings. Our t, our taha, our anti. We're going to talk about why these are spelled the way they are. And I'm going to kind of analyze that for you. We're going to go deep into it. And then I'm going to explain why it's good to go deep into it. But then just don't lose yourself in it. But first, let's start. And I want you to chant along. Okay, maybe I start a little slower. Varati varataha vadanti, varasi varataha varata, varami varavaha varamaha, varati varataha vadanti, varasi varataha varata, varami varavaha varamaha, varati varataha vadanti, varasi varataha varata. Um, I don't see where you're chanting. Can you see the screen? Can you see my screen? Yes. Can everyone see my screen where it says Varati, Varataha? Yes. Yes. I learned more from oral anyway, so I realize well, I guess that happens. Then listen and try to follow along. You're yeah. trying to just get this in your head. So here, I'll even use my cursor. Varati, Varataha, Vadanti. Varasi, Varataha, Varata. Vadami, Vadawaha, Varamaha. Varati, Varataha, Vadanti, Vadasi, Varataha, Varata, Vadami, Vadavaha, Vadamaha, Vadati, Vadataha, Vadanti, Vadasi, Vadataha, Varata, Vadami, Vadavaha, Vadamaha, Vadati, Vadataha, Vadanti, Vadasi, Vadataha, Varata, Vadami, Vadavaha, Vadamaha. All right. He speaks Vadati. Those two speak Vadataha. They all speak Vadanti. Vadasi, you talk. Vadataha, you two talk. Vadata, you all talk. Vadami, I talk. Vadawaha, we, including me, talk. Vadamaha, we all talk. Vadati, Vadataha, Vadanti. Vadasi vadataha vadata. Vadami vadavaha vadamaha. I realize I went too fast at first. That's the old guy who spent too much time in Kirtan. Vadati vadataha vadanti. Vadasi vadataha vadata. Vadami vadavaha vadamaha. Vadati vadataha vadanti. Vadasi vadataha vadata. Vadami vadavaha vadamaha. Notice how I get my hat, my head around those long A's and try to really hit the dentals. I mean, that way I'm I'm really hearing the way the word is spelled. 
Vadati Vadataha Vadanti Vadasi Vadataha Vadata Vadami Vadavaha Vadamaha Vadati Vadataha Vadanti Vadasi Vadataha Vadata Vadami Vadavaha Vadamaha Vadati Vadataha Vadanti Vadasi Vadataha Vadata Vadami Vadavaha Vadamaha Vadati Vadavati Vadata I'll see you even there. But a T, but a T. So you'll know you really have it down when you can start just spitting it out really fast. But a T, but a Taha Vadanti. But a C, but a Taha Vadata. But a me, but a Vaha Vadamaha. But a T, but a Taha Vadanti. But a C, but a Taha Vadata. But a me, but a Vaha Vadamaha. So your quiz for the next, next time is going to be to just have this memorized and be able to write it out in the Devanagari. But this other part of the quiz is I want you to record like one minute of you chanting this really fast and really clear. And if you do this every day for just a little bit of time, it'll all get in there. The other cool thing is once you, you know, sit down, make it a solid amount, make it a practice, chant these things, chant them out loud. Then when you're driving or listening to someone who's really irritating and you don't want to really hear what they're saying, but you want to feign interest in your head, you're, it becomes protection for your brain. And we'll talk about how mantras can be used a little bit later as what they call armor or kavacha, where one will actually chant mantras in their head to protect them from bad things coming into their senses, which is an elaborate concept that I will talk about a lot later. All right. So the first one is vud. The root becomes vada. Under that is added ti, taha, ti, anti, asi, ataha, taha. Well, that's actually si, taha, ta. Ami, vaha, amaha. That's parasmepada. Remember that there are going to be two forms of every word of every noun: parasmepada and apnepada. I'll write those with like a big P in brackets or a big A in brackets. So down here is Atmanepara. The word is, the root is bash, bash. If you speak other Indic languages, you'll know that basha means language in most Hindi languages. My friend Chloe used to tell this story about looking up a word in Hindi for hours. It said basha button. And it was, she was reading a comic book and it was a button that would translate something. And she lo said she looked up in every Hindi dictionary she could find the word button before realizing it was the English word button. I can tell a similar story about the word hypnotize, but I'll tell it later. Bosh. Bosh, like a, uh, is of a class of verbs that when it's conjugated, it takes an uh. It slaps an uh on there. It also takes guna, but we'll get to that. Pratama. That means first person. We remember that the first person in Sanskrit is different from the first person in English. Pratama means he, she, it, they, those two. Madhyama, middle voice, you, that's the same. Uttama, or the ultimate or the last voice, in fact, is um, in Sanskrit is I. So the interesting inversion is instead of our first person being I, our first person is others. Take from that Can what you say you that first person again. Pratama. Um, well, he, she, it. This uh, pratama. Mm -hmm. Can you say what it is? He. Sure. She, let me go. Let me go straight through it, and I'll explain it to you, and then we'll chant it. So bashate. He speaks. This, has, this word has the same meaning, but one is Atmanepada and one is Parasmaipada. Pashate, he speaks. Bashete, you are those two speak. Bashante, they speak. Madhyama, that's the you form. Bashase, you speak. Bashete, those two speak. Bashadwe, you all speak. In the Uttama form, Bashe, 
I speak, and I'm going to do the analysis of all of these later in this thing. I just want you to get it in your head right now. Bashavahe. Uh, we too speak. Bashamahe. We are, we all speak. So all of these words mean to speak, and they are in the present indicative. That means it just declares that something is happening. It indicates. Now, it's chanting time. Try to hit that ah real long and that sh. And I hate that Goldman picks these to have a sh in it because it's a little tricky to get your mouth around, but makes you stronger. It's like lifting weights in the consecutive days, which you increase the power, the bullum. Bashate, bashete, bashante. Bashase, bashete, bashadwe. Bashe, bashavahe, bashamahe. Try to repeat after me as best you can. Get these in your head. Bashate, bashete, bashante. Bashase, bashete, bashadwe. Bashe, bashavahe, bashamahe. Bashate, bashete, Bashante. Bashase, bashete, bashadwe. Bashe, bashavahe, bashamahe. Bashate, bashete, bashante. Bashase, bashete, bashadwe. Bashe, bashavahe, bashamahe. Bashate, bashete, bashanti. Bashase, bashete, bashidwe. Bashase, bashavahe, bashamahe. Get it in your mouth. Your mouth like will get the pronunciation because Sanskrit is such a natural language, despite being so artificial, that the shas and whatnot, the more you speak them and get them through, the more they'll kind of line up. In a funny way, it'll happen. Can I Bashate ask you? Yeah. Sorry. About, it's, sorry, it's about the first one and just the pronunciation. Sure. That was running through my head. So, like, um, when you say, when I'm memorizing it, I'm saying Vadasi, Vadataha, say on that. But when you pronounce yeah. that, is it Vadasi or is it Vadasi or is that? Okay, so look, um, you know, sometimes you'll even notice Sanskrit speakers do this. They'll say short us like long us. You need to remember that it's a short us, so try to pronounce it. So I'm kind of trying to enunciate a lot, so it'll kind of string things out. So let, let's let me see to try to do this really clearly. Vadati, vadataha, vadanti, vadasi, vadataha, vadata, vadami, vadavaha, vadamaha. Okay, I just wanted to hear the actual pronunciation. You're good. I didn't know if when I was trying to get that little rhythm thing, if it yeah. was. Right. And I don't so really that's that's not a natural that's not a rhythm that's like now. Well, it might be because my teacher taught it to me this way. Um, like that's it. just my own rhythm that comes out to get it into my head. Yeah. So if you I need to sing to... it like a Lady Gaga song. Go for it. <laughs> I just was checking on the pronunciation. Yeah. But that, that You're helped. all good. You're all good. Can okay. I offer a little clarification? Sure. Um, to my understanding. So please correct me if I'm missing anything here in the where to place stress in Sanskrit uh, depends on, um, like, you start by looking at the uh, second to last syllable, mm -hmm. and then whether or not that is short or long is going to determine whether it's that one or the one before that, that is said. So, for example, uh, it should be wadati, but it would be wadami. Because wadami, the A is already long. You put the stress there. But since it's a short A and wad, wadati, you put the stress on the wa. And so that's... Somebody's been reading Rupel. To... What's that? Somebody's been reading Rupel. <laughs> that, and it, it closely mirrors um, some other languages that do the same thing. Um, Probably because our mouths are the same. They're, they're what? The, because our mouths are the same around the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about this more when it comes to like sort of the pronunciation when you're properly chanting. But the most important thing here is not proper pronunciation. It's it's remembering how to spell these things. Because that's what I thought, but I wanted to yeah. 
that's, so that's, you need to memorize the, unlike if you were memorizing a Sanskrit passage that you'd be chanting in public or in a temple, here, you just, you need to chant it in a way that you remember it. So also full disclosure, I never learned them this way. I learned the patterns up and down, not left to right. But Dr. Williams teaches left to right, so I'm adjusting to it as well. All right, we need to do a little bit more of Basha and then we're going to move on. Don't worry, we're going to keep doing this. Bashate, Bashete, Bashante. Bashase, Bashete, Bashadwe. Bashe, Bashawahe, Bashamahe. Bashate, Bashete, Bashante. Bashase, Bashete, Bashadwe. Bashe, Bashawahe, Bashamahe. One more time. Bashate, Bashete, Bashante. Bashase, Bashete, Bashadwe. Bashe, Bashawahe, Bashamahe. All right, Swaha. Now let's figure this out. So this is the present indicative. Now there are these funny little codes that pundits use to name these different tenses or modes of verbs. They all start, for some darn reason, with the syllable la. So here, if you ask the pundit, is this present indicative? He'd say, what are you talking about? It's a lut. And he might say, vartmane lut. So a lut in the form of vartman. So that means present tense. So I want you to remember present indicative is the present time and it indicates something, but put in the back of your head that it's actually called in Sanskrit, Vartmane lat, or just lat. The present indicative is probably the most commonly used form of word in most languages. Usually when you learn a language, that is the first tense you learn. Now, as it's indicative, that means it's a simple statement of fact. It's indicating something. I like to think of it as it's you're narrating something. You're watching someone walk across the room. You say, he walks across the room. You're watching Ramo go to the forest and you say, or what Ramo go to the forest and you say, Ramo vanam gachati. All right. This is the thing that really helps if you can kind of get your head around this stuff. This is what I'm going to do is called conjugation analysis. So we're going to look at the endings. We're going to look at the changes in the root. And I'm going to explain to you why each word is spelled this way. Now, you don't need to incorporate everything. But I was having a conversation with Dr. Williams, and he said the more that we initially do analysis on these conjugations and on the declensions that we're going to look at at the end of class, the better you will be in the long run and the easier it is to learn them because you sort of see the core patterns. And I know when I first learned them, I, I really struggled to see the core patterns and just tried to memorize everything straight instead of kind of seeing how they come together. That'll make sense when you start sort of comparing your memorized version of the present indicative with the next tense we're going to learn, which is the imperfect, which is the past tense. The first thing to see is we have two roots. Remember that I said that all the roots, all the verbs in Sanskrit come back to a specific set of roots. There's about 5,000 of them, but there's only 1,000 of them that are really common. I think if I put my, main, my, my mind to it, I could probably sit down and write about 500 of them. You will too in time. So to make a verb, you take the root. These both are in verb class one. The rule in verb class one, and there are 10 classes, but you're not going to worry about that right now. It takes guna, which means if it was a, uh, it's long a, uh, or if it's a, uh, it's short a. Uh. Guna can do both things, but the guna happens. Then at the end, so vud, they add an uh to it. That's the verbal marker. You remember when we were doing internal Sunday, I was like, and you put an A on here because it's a verbal marker. Why? Don't worry about it yet. But you need to just kind of know that that's how we get from vada, or we get from vud to vadati, or bush to bashate. They both take an uh after the root. So the transformed root with the uh attached to it and some guna action, that becomes the stem form. To the stem form, you put these endings. Now, vadate, 
vadate vadante. Well, no, bashate, bashate, bashante. Notice there's a long a uh there. Bashase, bashate, long a, uh, bashadwe. Okay, interesting. What's that dwe? Now it's not, but it's, so it's there. It's just bashe. Look at that. So the a uh has dropped. I'll explain why in just a minute. Bashawahe, bashamehe. Vad becomes vada, adds the uh, vadati, vadataha, vadanti. Vadasi, vadataha, vadata. Wait, it's not vadanti with a long A, is it? No, it's not. I'll explain why. Vadasi, vadataha, vadata. Okay, those are just added to the ta, to the, the vada. That's fine. Okay. Vadami, fine. Vadawaha, fine. Vadamaha, cool. Those aren't a big deal. So, how does all this happen? And in the meanwhile, I'm watching my girlfriend chase the dog under a table because he refuses to come and get his leash put on, which is just ridiculous. Oh, he's on the other side of the table. Oh, Arlo. So here's some kind of quick observations I wanted to think about with you here. When you're looking at these paradigms, we're going to note that that I, right? That I, right? That in the parasme pada here is found T, C, me. So a verb that ends in that I with those particular endings is likely to be the present indicative eka vachana of the pratama purusha, madhyama purusha, or uttama purusha. The I is also found in anti. So these are endings that you will see. These are like the biggest endings. T, C, me, and anti. Those are the most common deployments of these verb endings. When you're looking at the Atmanepada over here, and I'm going to code all of this with colors in a minute. Notice A, 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 all right. Te, Se, A, all right. Varate, Vate, Vahe, Vadante, Vadwe, Vade. Okay, so if it's a verb that has a little A sound at the end, what we would call an E, that's going to be an Atmanepada form. All right, I'm in good shape. Now, Dr. We, Ali, yes. Is, is verb class one also the. Uh, so when you said, I'm sorry, when you said verbs ending in I are likely to be in the... Okay, hold on. Let me make the, I, then if you heard that, I misspoke. Endings. So the full verb with an ending that has an I on the end of it, or the right. full verb, so the root plus the ending, and if it yeah. ends in the A, so that's likely with A to be Atmanepada, and the T, if it, so it's a full verb, then on an anti, those are likely to be parasmaipada, particular okay. parasmaipada indicative. So look to the tas. Now, I think there are other patterns that are kind of helpful, like that there's a th there in the duivachana in both. Uh, these aren't helping you at all. Here we have vaha and maha, and here we have va and maha. So you remember that that va sound in an ending or that ma sound in an ending, despite the a or nothing, is going to be a sign that you have an atmanepada verb. <laughs> now, I like to look at these in color. I wish the color was a little bit more vibrant. <laughs> I'm looking and I see varati varataha vadanti, varasi varataha varata, varami varavaha varamaha. Hmm. What's Dr. Ulrich interested in in these colors? E, E, E. And there's one there too, but I really want you to see E, E, E. Varati, Varasi, Varami, which is how I memorized them in the first place. What about these common tas? Well, there's a ta. There's a ta. All right, that's helpful to remember. Over in Bashate, oh, look, those have the same tas. Okay, so there's another pattern. Now, what about the A? I don't see any A's over here. So our blue A's, bashete, bashete, bashante, that shows us that it is likely an atmanepada present. We're remembering that our root is vad, becomes vada in the first class. The a uh is added to the root that is gunad. And then the second one here, bashete, is also a verb in the a uh class. So the root bush becomes basha. Looking again and chanting at the same time, ABC, always be chanting. Varati, all right, T and an I, all right. Varata, that's a taha, that's similar there. 
Vedanti, oh, it's Auntie. That's another T. Auntie's a common name. Varasi, okay, there's the I there. That's the same as there. Varataha, Varata. Okay, I'm going to remember that there's a pattern here with these aspirated tas. That's good. That's good. That's a rule I can remember. But a me, okay, eyes, tell me that I'm in <coughs> the singular class. Varawaha, Varamaha. Those are different, but they're vas and mas. Oh, they're really similar to the Atmanepara. I go over to Atmanepara, and the first thing I'm like, oh, they all end at A. Well, that's cool. I mean, unlike over in the Paras Mepara, where I have to remember that, is it a ta, is it a... Is it an aspirated, or is it a, is a ha? What, what's it going to be? Who knows? But here, bashete. All right, there's that ta again. Bashete. All right, ta's double. That's the same as in vadati. Bashante. You know what? Ante and ante are pretty closely connected to me. So I'm going to remember that the nt form is the plural of what the censor calls the first person, which is what we call the third person. Again, let's do it in English. Bashate, he speaks. Bashate, you speak. I'm explaining that you are speaking. Bashante, they all speak. I go down to Bashase. You speak. You speak right now. Bashate, you too speak. Bashadve. So you'll be clear that this bashete doesn't come up very often, but it's there. You'll find it on a rare occasion. Bashete bashadwe. Well, all right. That's completely different, but there is the double ta there. How do I remember that that's a da there? Huh? What is that? Why would it be a da there? I don't know. It does come into that ha, which is voiced. Ta, but that's a single letter. I don't know, but it's clear that it's voiced here. Okay, I'm going to remember that that one's voiced. Bashase, or sorry, bashe, remembering that's long bash plus a, so it's not basha a, it's just bashe. So the a uh drops. Why? There's a rule. I'll explain it to you. Bashavahe, bashamahe. Here, I'm remembering that we've got vaha and maha here, but it's ending in a, uh, so you could almost remember that these two endings, the va and ma with characteristic Parasmaipada are with the Visarga, and with characteristics, Atmanepada is an A. Now, don't panic. This is okay. You got this. Everybody's in the same place. We're going to go really slow. So this is what we call conjugation analysis. We're going to look at the endings, and I'm going to explain them to you, and then I'm going to show them in practice. And we're going to go like three little rules at the time. What really helps is to think in the Sanskrit vocabulary of grammar. So utama eka with ja is just a with no consonant in the atmanepada. Okay, atmanepada. So that's over here. Atmanepada. Utama, here we go. Eka vachana is right there. Okay, it's just an A. That's what I'm gonna remember. It doesn't have a consonant added to it, like all the other ones, like an ante, a te, or a vahe. It's just an a in and of itself. I'll explain to you why in a second. Now, let's look at the ekavachana in each of these categories. Te, t, se, c, a, me. So you remember that a ma, that there is no ma here. But you can see a pattern that in the ekavachana, te, se, e, t, c, me. Cool. Now, what we also see is that any short a before a ma or a v is lengthened. Mm. So you can't see it here, but you will see in the dvivachana of Atmanepada, you'll see Bashavahe and Bashamahe. So our Basha, our root stem, has another little uh put onto it and lengthen. Basha here becomes Bashamahe. The next slide will have this all spelled out. Over here, Vadawaha, Vadamaha. All right. Now, let's look at it again, but in color. Vadati, Vadasi, Vadami. That's a clear pattern. Oh, look. Do you see that the, that Vada, the A uh lengthened before a Ma? Cool. All right. 
Great. Bashate, similar, T, T. Basha say, C, say. Okay, so it's te, T, T, and T, say, and C. Vadamahi, or Vadami, Bashe. All right, I just got to remember that when everything shortens up as an ending, that's Atmanepada. And it's just, it's shorter. So that's how I know it's Atmanepada. Okay, what's my other rule? So we've contrasted all of those. What about this long A before Ma and Va? Well, we've got it here. Well, so it'd be vada plus vaha, but because it's the uh is before a long va, the rule I wrote out on the last slide, it becomes longer. Short a uh before a maha in these paradigms becomes longer. Vada maha. In the same way, it's not bashava he, it's bashava he. The uh before the va and before the ma lengthens. So those are three observations that I gave you. One, by looking at the endings, and two, by looking at how the verbs actually work. We've should got some be, more. Yes. About a, about a me, should that be a long A? That it, I think it's in the Devanagari it is, but in the... Oh, yeah, the, it's not, but it is in the Devanagari. <laughs> okay, so it needs to be a long A there. Yeah. Okay. Thank but you. Yeah. I, generally, my Devanagari will be better than my transliteration. And that's why you shouldn't transliterate. You just read the Sanskrit. Okay. Okay. So here, we're going to go a little bit further. We have some other rules. Now, we're looking in the Pratama Bahu. And this is in the Parasmaipada. All right. So I've got Pratama. There you go. Bahu. Pardon? Okay. So here, we see the uh drops. So instead of it being vadanti, it becomes vadanti. So vada drops the uh and picks up the uh from the ending. Does this seem like a sniggling, irritating little thing to look at? Yes, but it's part of the system of grammar and Sanskrit. Now let's see if that works down here, not manepada. Bashate, bashate. Bashante, ah, here as well, lengthens. See, we'll see that when we come to here, or here, or here. See how it's shortened? Bashante, sorry, I switched my screens. We'll see, I'm going to do all of this in color a second time, which will make more sense. I just want you to hear the, the hear and follow through what I'm doing first, and then, um, then I'll make it clearer with another slide that has it all in color. So the uh, once again, we're dealing with all these uhs. Before a uh, atmanepada uttama eka. So atmanepada uttama eka. A. Here the a uh, again is dropped. So it's not bashae or bashaye or something. It's just bash plus the a. Bashe. So we've learned in these two instances in the pratama bahuvachana, the root or the, the stem drops its uh and it picks up the the uh from the ending drops its basha becomes bush and adds the ending ante and here basha drops the uh and becomes a now the initial atmanepada in the pratama purusha and madhyama purusha dvivachana here and here becomes a. So it's manyate. Um, or so what we would think it would be manya plus ate, but in fact it's manya plus ate. So this doesn't apply here. I'm telling it to you right now because it will come up in another case. This is one of those file it away later. That initial long A and that initial long A drop and become A. We'll see that in a second. Now, after any one morphed root ending, except for A, uh, if there's a nasal, as you see here, an ante or anti, it drops to make a T, but only after any vowel but uh. So here you're going to have basha 
Bashante. But if you have Yunj, which does not have an a uh after it, it would be adding the full ante right there, but the nasal drops. This is why when you see yunjate, you have to know it's still plural. That said, this only applies to the atmanepada. So if you have the root yunj plus anti up here, it doesn't drop the nasal. This is another one of those sniggling little rules that will get in your way later, but not now. Okay, so I explained it. I cannot tell you how long it took me to make this slide yesterday. But I can also tell you, I don't think I ever really understood this verbal form as well as by making this slide and thinking it through. Remember our first rule back here. Vada plus anti becomes vadanti, not vadanti. Why? The a uh drops before the anti ending and the bahuvachana pratama purusha. So if you look here, you see A-N-T-I. You know, our root is vada, but it does not become a long A. It becomes short. It drops an A. Over here in the Atmanepada, we had basha, right? But it's not because with the ending is ante with that little a. Uh, so it's not bashante, but it's bashante. So in both of these cases, in the bahuvachana pratima purusha, the a uh, at the end of the stem, the morphed root drops and the anti or the ante is attached directly. Goldman explains this perfectly clearly if you know how to read Goldman. If you don't know how to read Goldman, it doesn't make a lick of sense. And it took me a while to kind of get it all in my head. Now when I go back and I look at Goldman, I'm like, ah, oh, it's perfectly clear. All right, so you have a ma, you have a morphed root in Atmanepada. Atmanepada, Uttamapada, Ekavachana. So right over here, that little A ending, right? You got an E at the end of it. Here, it's not basha plus A. It's bush. It drops the a uh and becomes just she. So what do we learn? If there is an a uh before the final vowel ending of a in the uttama purusha ekavachana, it just becomes a. The a uh drops. Woo! All right, moving right along. The initial a uh and pra um, blah, blah, blah. The initial long A and the Pratama and Madhyama Dwiwachana becomes A. All right, so we're looking over here. And that's particularly among these. Yeah, I told you this didn't matter. It does matter. Okay, so your initial long A, this long A and this long A. And the Atmanepada Dwiwachana, the A transforms into a short E. So basha, bashe, and then this uh drops it. Whoever's you need to mute yourself, whoever's speaking. Bashete. So we have basha, the uh turns into an a, and then the other uh drops, or you can imagine the uh drops and the long a turns into an a. That's how you go from an ending that's bashate, bashate, or <laughs> what you would think would be bashate or bashate to bashete, bashete. So there's a reason for the different spellings. Finally, we have our morphed root ending without an A. This ends with an A in your bahuvachana pratama purusha. Bashante. Here, if you had yuj, the root yunj doesn't have an a attached. Why doesn't it have an a attached? Because it's a different class that doesn't add a to the root. Don't worry about it. We'll get there. That's fine. Here, the nasal drops. So if it's a root that does not have an a connected, the nasal drops. So if it was yunj, which you would think would be yunjanti, it is not, in fact. It is yujate, the nasal drops. Oh, sorry, yeah. That's only in the parasma, in the, in the apanepada. 
it's the same in the Paras Maipada. So for Yuj, you'd have Yujate, but you would have Yujanti, uh, Yujanti, Yujanti, that should say Yujanti. Don't worry about that. Now, here's the thing. What the fuck, Goldman? Why did I go through that? What, what was the point? Motherfucker, I don't even know Sanskrit yet. And you're telling me how to form these really intricate, weird ass rules about how to, I just need to memorize it. I just need to memorize it. So the reality of it is you don't need to know these rules. You just need to accept that they're true. And you'll see a link. This link is your friend. That is a link to an Indian organization that has compiled this incredible version called the Sanskrit Grammarian. Here, you can enter using diacritics or using Devanagari or just, or there's a couple of different translation or input systems. You put it in there, you set the gender and then say how you wanna see it and it'll give you a full noun declension of any word. Conjugation is where it's even more important. I'll show you why. So let's say I put in the word vud, like we just had. I put in the class, I know it's the first class, I put in my output, and then what's gonna happen? This happens. So if you look, and we'll look at the, I'll have a little bit bigger of a version. Remember what I said, this is the LUT, the indicative form. Here are all the LUTs. Varati, varataha, varanti, varasi, varataha, varata, varami, varava, varamaha. Oh, and there it is in the Atmanepara. Varate, varete, varante, varase, varete, varase, varete, varagwe, vade, vadavahe, vadamahe. Remember, I said that any word can be paras maipara and atmanepara, and atmanepara. There is the atmanepara form of vad that we saw before. And then this cool thing here, this is called the karmani. That's a passive. So here you'll see the way that the word changes to be used in the passive case. So you can use resources like this and you can have them output in Devanagari or in English and they're really helpful. It also tells you instead of lut, it says present. Instead of karmani, you know, the actor tense or the passive actor tense, it just says passive. If singular, dual, and plural, it's all right there. The only thing I don't like is that it goes vadamihi, vadami in the first and vadati in the last. So it switches around the um, the first person and the last person to reflect more of what we see in English. But I'm not losing a lot of sleep on that. So <laughs> take a look, it's all in there. Here's the lun form. That's imperfect, that's the past tense. There you take your vud and in all of these you add an a uh to the front of it. And then you have another specific set of endings. If you look kind of close, you'll also see that this is also an a uh class. So the root vud takes an a. Uh. Vud takes an a. Uh. So that gets you there. Now, I will send you this link. This link is very helpful when you get to more advanced Sanskrit. Right now, it's gonna give you too much information because you'll look it up and this is only one of 10 different things they'll give you, at least 10. You will be able to navigate those no problem by third year Sanskrit, but you're not there yet. But this is to say that you don't have to remember why it's ante or, or why you know the a uh lengthens or doesn't lengthen or how to really form it because what you're gonna be doing is reading a word like vadamaha and you're like, I bet that's in, I bet that's VUD. So you type in VUD and then you get your screen like this and you look for Vadamaha and then you go, oh, that's Uttama class. That's Bahuvachana. Oh yeah, look there. See here, the Pratama class is the, what we call in English, the third person. So it switches between the English and the Sanskrit output. All right. Now, here's our word we're learning for today. The word is us or the word is the root is us which means to be and the reason we study this one is because it's an irregular verb you will encounter this verb all the time it used it's used to be there is or they are there are it establishes a connection between a noun and a verb 
it's often dropped or understood. And I'll show you how this works in an example in a second. But first, asti, staha, santi. Asi, staha, sta. Asmi, swaha, smaha. Asti, staha, santi. Not shanti, santi. Asi, staha, sta. Asmi, swaha, smaha. Do you see how this works? It's our same pattern. And this is why you have to keep chanting to get your mouth around it because the paradigms have little differences, but they have more commonalities than differences. And if you can see the commonalities, I find it's easier to integrate. Asti, staha, santi. Asi, staha, sta. Asmi, swaha, smaha. Asti, staha, santi. Asi, staha, sta. Asmi, swaha, smaha. All right, that's gonna be one word to chant. Let's do some examples real quick and we're gonna round out class. So, first off, so this is asti. Oh, crap, it was already an error. Uh, so, asti, oh no, there isn't. Asti, asmin, nripaha. Nripaha means king. Here we have, so that's astia. Nah, come here. Yeah, so that just didn't combine. So it's, come here. Yeah. Asti. Really? My computer's being all poopy. All right. So in this sense, you use the asti as there is. So it's as if I'm just saying there is a king in this country. Asti plus asmin, the ya turns in, or the e turns into a ya, and then attaches to the asmin. So astyasmin, deshe, deshe means a country. And king is Nripaha. If you open up your Goldman, which is better than me misspelling things, you will find this on la 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 la, chapter four, chapter four, parts of speech. Which one is it? Yes, this will be found in 4.23. Astyasmin deshe nripa, found on page 57. Now, we look further down and we see santi. We know santi is the plural of ast. Swarge santi deva. Plural. Deva. We haven't learned nouns yet, but we're going to real soon. Deva is plural. So, swarge in heaven, santi, there is deva, gods. Now, you can also see this uh, asti or us verb drop. So you get rama nripa, ramas nripaha, but you have the sandi before the voice nasal becomes an o. Ramo nripa, that's saying rama king, but there's an is that's in there. Okay, here's some other examples real quickly. You have Kakaha Krishnaha. Kakaha means black, or actually means crow, sorry. And Krishnaha, just like the god Krishna, means black or dark. So Kaka Krishnaha, I can just write that and it says crows are black. Here's a great one. Vanaro Asmi. So that's Vanaras Asmi with Sandi. So Vanarosmi. I am a monkey. Vanara. Vanaro hum. Look at that. That's just a hum, which means I. And vanaro or vanara means monkey. So you say basically say monkey I. And that's what's called they're an apposition. They are put together by having the same ending. Okay, so we'll come back to this, but I want to really quick have you look at so now. Yes. Those two things mean the, the same thing, the, the vanaro shmi. Yes. So vanaro smi has the is word in it. Vanaro okay. hum does not. And in fact, you'll notice that this doesn't have a hum in it. 
but you know that the ahum or the I is there because there's the usme. So we'll start class with this next time. But what we're also going to do is we're going to be learning nouns. Now, very, very quickly. Nouns vary based on gender, male, female, neuter. Also, they, well, actually, no, sorry. That's, <laughs> that's singular, dual, plural. This is a masculine noun. We'll look at a feminine noun next. So this is a masculine noun. Pr pratama form means it's in the naming case, the case that uh, a subject of a sentence, Raman and Ramovanam Gachati. Dvitaya Purusham in the singular, this is the object case, the direct object or the location of motion. Tritya is the instrumental, by means of which something is done. Purushena, by the man or with the man. Chaturta, this is what's called dative. Parushaya, this is dative form. Dative form is like someone who receives a gift from. Panchami, fifth. Purushat, ablative. This is from a source somewhere. Shashti is the genitive, which is like our word of. Saptami is locative, parushe. And then finally, there's an, an eighth form, which is the same as the first form, except for one little difference, and that's vocative. So if you've heard some of these terms before, you might have studied German or Latin. I like to say that Sanskrit is French for verbs and German for nouns, and that makes it an absolute nightmare. So we are going to work on this in the next time. Class is over. I want you to read Goldman chapter four. Keep reading it. Study the examples. I want you to check out resources on noun declensions because that's what we're going to start with. We finished the present indicative. We'll probably look at some of the examples in more detail and then go right to the nouns on Tuesday. So I have some extra resources on verbs. There are also some extra resources I'll get up soon once I dig them out of the scans on nouns. You'll be free to read. I want you to continue to chant the verbs twice a day, at least 10 minutes. If possible, I want you to do vud and bush, but also incorporate us. Incorporate that paradigm we learned today. And if you want, you can try becoming more familiar with Purusha, but I don't really have a song for it yet. We'll get there. The last thing, if you really want to be working on something, at the end of chapter four, you will see the reading assignment. And I cannot tell you how excited I am to just be reading Sanskrit and not just teaching you rules. So on page 75, you'll find the reading assignment. You can practice, you can try to translate it if you want. I'm gonna teach you how to translate the, this one first. It's gonna be our first translation exercise. So maybe practice reading out loud, practice breaking the Sundays, practice just reading the Devanagari. But what we're gonna do when it comes to translation time as we're going to go around the room one at a time, translate lines, I will help you. And we're going to study that ver that set of verses, that passage, until you can read it quickly and understand every word and every grammatical thing. Now, will that really happen? No. But by the end of the unit, you'll have 80%. And the 20% you don't have, you'll get in chapter five. You're never going to get more than 80% of any chapter. So stop trying to think that you can get 100%. All right, y'all. Good work on the quiz today. I'm sorry about that little bit of a clusterfuck uh, with the uh, different version. But we got through some really good materials now. And we are learning Sanskrit. And from now on, there will be no more learning things that don't have meaning. No more. There's nothing like Sunday again. Everything from here on out. You'll learn words that have meaning and you'll put them together using grammatical context that you'll be able to go back and read. So from now on, reading, you're going to read instead of just learning and memorizing abstract things. All right. I am going to hit the stop and anyone is free to leave. Class is over. If you need to speak to me about anything, I'm right here for a couple minutes. So can you just remind me for the the next quiz, it's the 